people and, and people mm -hmm. have come into this tournament again with, with a big win and I think today against probably one of the strongest teams tournament um, and I think maybe <laughs> power that she has later on against Denmark and of course a progress. A lot of it is going to do with the line of two as well being said in that game to have 46. I recently went to Bath and I did a reading spa and I thought I would talk about it on YouTube. <laughs> I used to post booktube content on this channel and I've honestly thought about coming back to it for some time so I thought I would kick it off by talking about the reading spa that I went to. And hello my name's Hannah um, and I'm a massive book lover from the UK so let's let's see what happens here. So last week I went to Bath which is a city here in the UK and I went to a shop called Mr B's Emporium which is I think it was like one of the top 10 independent bookshops in the world at some point um maybe it still is I, I don't know but it is a uh, quite a famous independent bookshop in Bath and they do these things called reading spas which I got for Christmas um as a Christmas present and basically you go and you get tea and a coffee um, and some cake and then one of the booksellers picks out individual book recommendations for you and you get £60 worth of book tokens um, to get whatever books you want from that list. So I just thought I'd talk about my experience of it and obviously do a book haul at the end of all of the books that I got. So like I said this was a Christmas present from my parents and my mum ended up booking her own reading spa because she was really jealous of me going. So we went together and it was a lovely mini break. If you've never been to Bath I highly recommend it. It is beautiful. So Mr B's is located a little bit off the beaten track and it was never packed like it's quite a small pokey bookshop and there's loads of places to get lost in it is wonderful like even if you're not doing a reading spa I definitely recommend it it is a beautiful bookshop um but I never felt really crowded in there as well it's it's off the main road and it didn't take as long to find like it wasn't difficult to find but I did like that it felt very private and when you're there when you're in front of the booksellers they honestly make you feel like you're the only person in the bookshop like everyone that we spoke to and we spoke to quite a lot of the booksellers were so lovely they know what they're talking about and they're not you know they, they have their own niches and they bounce off each other and they ask each other for recommendations you know when I was doing my reading spa the guy I was talking to Henry who was lovely um he was like oh my wife suggested this book and then the next day we went back and the person at the checkout I'm really sorry I can't remember their name but um she went oh you were with Henry yesterday I recommended xyz and it was just so nice to talk to people who talk about books like that's part of the reason why I wanted to come back to booktube was because because my best friend now lives in Cornwall like 200 miles away from me and I miss talking about books so I wanted to talk about books and it was just so nice to be with these people who are just like me <laughs> and as well who didn't look at the things that I read and think oh those are a bit creepy those are a bit weird my mum said the same thing so she reads a lot of sort of like contemporary novels which I don't read so it was nice for her to be able to talk to other people who read what she reads because none of her friends read that either so it was just a wonderful experience. So when we got there we had our reading spas booked um one, mine was at two my mum's was at four and they ended up just doing them pretty much simultaneously because the booksellers were around and it was just like pretty much to do the booking like they have it in those time slots but the booksellers were available so we were taking up to the bibliotherapy therapy room which I want in my life and we got to sit in these really comfy armchairs I could have fallen asleep there they was it was just so nice and the in the room that we're in it's all of their favorites so it's like their favorites room so we could look around and see like oh so if you like this book you might like this this is this and it was just a really comforting room to be in it had a fireplace and it was just so nice 
So we got some tea. We got it in our Mr. B's mug. And then part of the reading spot is that you get a tote bag and a mug to take away with you. So this is the Mr. B's mug. And on the back, it has a quote. Uh, Mr. B's rewrites Canary Row by John Steinbeck. And it said, Mr. B's in Bath in England is a poem, a noise, a quality of light, a tone, a habit, a nostalgia, a dream. Henry did my book spell first and he came over and we sat down and he just asked me questions like what books do you like, um, what books do you not like, like what's your most recent reads, what are you reading at the moment and it was just so nice to talk to someone who reads what I read and you know I was reading things and he was like nodding like yeah I know that book and then he was saying oh my gosh yeah I love that one and it turned into a bit of a dialogue and then before he went to the other parts of the bookshop to get books, he was like, right, we're gonna start in here. Let's get up and go around. And we were choosing these books. And I had a pile of about, I think it was six or seven books. And I was like, you know what? I could just leave with these. Like they were all such good recommendations already. And then he went off for about half an hour. So bearing in mind, we'd already been talking and choosing those books for 40 minutes. He then went off for like 20 minutes, half an hour, and came back with a massive pile of books basically they sort of sat opposite me and he passed me the book and then talked a little about why he think i why he thought i would like it and what the book is about so it was almost like i don't know like a very personal review of the book um and that were there was such a lot of choice it took me an hour to choose the six books that i wanted and it was quite helpful that my mum was having her own reading spa because while she was doing that i was choosing and then even after she'd finished and chosen her books i was still choosing like and yeah it was brilliant yeah we got a, a whole pile of books and we also with the reading spa you get a 10 pound voucher to return so we actually went back on the sun uh not the sunday the friday the second day um and we spent our 10 pound voucher because we're not massively far from bath it was about two hours on the train but we're far enough that it's not somewhere that we'd likely go for a day trip and I also took some photos of the book so I had a full reading list and I've already been searching up some of those books online so I can buy them um, because there was just so many choices. It was honestly amazing. I would definitely go back, maybe not for a reading spa, not for a while anyway. I mean, now I've got eight more books to get through before I get any more. But um, you know, I would definitely go back to the bookshop. I've been talking for a long time. Let's get on to the books that I bought. <laughs> so like I said, you get a tote bag as part of the Mr. B's reading spa experience. Okay, so I'll talk about the two that I bought, which were not on recommendations, just ones that I had seen around. And then I'll go on to the ones that I chose from the reading spa. So this one I had seen on one of the bookshelves that was almost directly opposite me as we were doing the reading spa. So I stared at it for like two hours and I just had to get it like a beeline straight for it on the Sunday. And it is Hair House by Sally Hinchcliffe. So this is a story of a woman who arrives to a cottage in Southwest Scotland. Um, but it's uh, like a witchy book but I really like gothic tales set in mysterious houses in the middle of nowhere so this one I think is going to be right up my street I think I might save it for a rainy day it's quite short um it's 300 pages so short compared to some of the other books that I read um but I also really like the cover like it just looked witchy and spooky and gothic and I'm really into gothic fiction so the next one that I picked up, I picked up on the Sunday, like I said, but I was just sort of looking around and I just thought it had a really interesting cover. And then I read the first sort of five pages and I was like, yeah, I have to get this book. And it is Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore by Robin Sloan. And this is um, about a guy called Clay Jannon, who used to be a web designer but recession like pushed him out of his job and he gets a new job working the night shift at this 24 hour bookstore and it's I sort of flicked through and I didn't want to spoil myself but the bookstore seems to almost have a be like a character on its own and Clay is quite a sarcastic man 
uh, but it also it pokes fun at like web design it doesn't take itself too seriously from the first five pages that i read anyway but it just seemed like a really interesting book and i really like the writing style as well it's quite a friendly approachable writing style so i do think i'm really going to enjoy this and when i checked out the bookseller at the checkout again i can't remember her name i'm really really sorry um she said that she really loved it as well so i feel like it was a good choice um and i'm very excited to read this one right let's get on to the books that i got as part of the reading spa so i'm going to start out with the hardback now this one has been on my watch list i guess for a a long time and honestly having it brought to me in the readings file was just like the push that I needed to get it I mean you probably recognize this book it's got a bit the dust jacket's got a bit damaged um but it is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett now Emily Wilde is a fairy researcher and she goes to I think it's Iceland maybe Norway I'm not sure um an exploration of this fairy and she has like a rival fairy researcher who's also there but they realize that they have to team up um to find something the fairy <laughs> i'm not sure the cover is absolutely stunning i cannot wait to read this one next one is a completely different vibe it is the assembly of the severed head um by hugh lupton now this book is very different it's an independent book um basically it's about welsh fairy tales so i said that i was reading a book at the time called the fairy tellers which is about the history of people who made fairy tales so like hans christian anson brothers Grimm all that sort of stuff and the bookseller said this is all about the welsh fairy tales and when you read them you will realize how much how many stories from nowadays come from these stories so basically the main character or the character that we follow i can't remember his name david he finds a severed head washed up on a beach and as he goes back he's in, in a monastery as he goes back there um people say oh we found other severed heads and it's from a monastery up basically up the road and basically the I can't remember if it's Norman's or someone has gone in to this monastery and killed all the monks. I think it must be during the dissolution. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember who kills them. <laughs> Sorry. But basically someone goes in and kills um, all the monks apart from one. There is one survivor. Now this survivor is has got fatal wounds. He is going to die. But before he dies, he asks David um, slash uh, another brother who is literate to write down all of the tales that he knows um so they're not lost because he is one of the last people who knows all of these tales and i wasn't going to get this because i'm going to show you why this is the text on the inside it's quite small and the paper is quite thin so you can see the next page and it actually gave me a headache reading it but i read like the first 30 40 pages in um mr b's and i was like I have to get it i have to finish it i have to know what happens <laughs> so i picked it up um i also i did look to see if it was on kindle and it's not on kindle otherwise i would have got it on there because like i said i just find it very hard to read but i think if i read it in little and often chunks i won't get too much of a headache reading it but i'll still be able to enjoy it this was also a book that henry was like i have to get you this one you have to read it so i felt like i had to <laughs> but for a good reason for a good reason um so this is the assembly of the severed head very different vibe to the last one <laughs> now the next one is a book that i have seen a lot but to be honest in my head i thought this was a romance so i never picked it up and i didn't really i read the blurb a couple of times but i didn't i just thought it was a romance book so i never picked it up but it was recommended obviously so I picked it up and it is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony, I think it's pronounced Doa. Um, so this is set during World War II and there's a girl called Marie who is blind and her father builds her a miniature Paris so she can learn to navigate herself around the city. And in building this miniature Paris, he unlocks a secret and they have to run for their lives. And then there is another boy called warner who is a german orphan 
um, who ends up looking at the Hitler Youth and joining the Hitler Youth and it's about their lives sort of crossing um, but I that's about all I know about it <laughs> but it was just pitched to me really well and it sounds like an interesting book and sounds like something that I would read as opposed to something that originally I thought was a romance probably I wouldn't read I am a big historical fiction fan and yeah I had to pick it up but I, I really hate this Netflix sticker so I wonder if I can find another sticker that I can put over next up is another book that I wasn't going to get because the font is too small <laughs> because I'm really picky about the books but I read the first few pages and it's quite similar actually to the first book that I showed you I can't remember what it's called Hair House um in that it's set in I think Scotland and it's about an isolated house and an isolated island where there has been hints of witchcraft and folklore and it is called salt and skin it's by eliza henry jones um and it's about a family who moves i think from london up to this isolated scottish island and strange things start happening um to the mother and her son who starts to see strange things and it just seemed really interesting i read the first couple of pages this is why it took me so long to choose because i literally read the first couple of pages of every book i had um and it just seemed like something i would be very interested in but i don't think i would have picked this up if I'd not been at the reading spa because the cover is not one that particularly interests me like it's not a bad cover it's just not something that I would pick up necessarily so that's why I think the reading spa was so good because although I'd heard of All the Light We Cannot See and Emily Wilde never heard of The Assembly of the Severed Head never heard of this one and I'd seen the covers of the other two but hadn't really heard much about them so I wouldn't have picked this up and I'm very excited to read it now next up is a book that i have seen but also because there was like this phase of a lot of book covers that looked like this um so it looked familiar but i had no idea what this book was about and as soon as henry told me about it i was like yeah that one's coming home with me this was this one and the other one were my two immediate choices and the other four were ones that i sort of um don't know erred over but this one is called once upon a river by diane setterfield now this is about um the the river thames so it's once upon a river now in like it's like medieval england along the river Thames, there's all these inns and houses and people go to different inns for different things so there's like a drinking inn there's a fighting inn and this one is a storytelling inn so they go to this inn to hear stories now one night a guy walks in and he has what looks like a doll in his arms and he puts it down and it's a girl and this girl seems to be dead but she starts to breathe and a lot of people like claim her so they say like she's my daughter she's my wife she's my friend um and it's about like unraveling these stories and who she actually is and it just seems really interesting so it's like a mystery it's storytelling um it's got you know this sort of like sciencey aspect to it it seems from the back um and it is probably the longest one maybe if maybe that I picked up but it just seems like a really interesting read and I'm very excited to get to it. Now the last one that I've picked up is one that I may have picked up on my own anyway but I probably wouldn't have had like the push to do it like I may have picked it up if I saw it on sale for example but it's called Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. Now this is a gothic um mystery again <laughs> getting a theme here now this is set in london in 1863 and it's about a female detective called bridie devine and she has to recover this stolen child um who I'm, I'm assuming maybe lives in a jar i don't really know but basically it's yeah talking about like the victorians and victorians were fond of weird things and I think that's what this book is going to explore and like the weird medicine that they did the weird things that they discovered in that time but this is it says on the back from the times this unusual Victorian detective tale is hugely satisfying and beautifully written so this is one that Henry said other things about it that made me want to pick it up but I can't remember what they are now but I will read this and let you know um but that is the big pile of books that i got from mr b's emporium 
as I said, it was a wonderful place to go. I highly recommend it and I've got a lot to read now. <laughs> and my tea has gone cold because I forgot to drink it. But that's the end of the video. I've been talking for nearly half an hour, so I feel like I'm going to wrap it up right here. Um, let me know in the comments which book you thought was interesting and also if there's any videos that you want to see. It's been a while since I've done a booktube video, but I've really enjoyed filming this. So I think I might make some more in the future. <laughs> but yeah, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos from me. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. And I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you soon for a new video. Bye.